Good morning, world. Welcome to another episode of Zen Dependently Minded. If you are a new or returning listener, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're interested in more content like this and podcasts in the future, stay tuned because it's only going to get bigger and better from here. The world is in our hands. Let's do something with it. So on this episode of MMA Minded, I'm just going to react to the announcement of Israel Adesanya and uh, Yoel Romero. Their bout was agreed, and their Yoel Romero is going to challenge Israel Adesanya at UFC 248, I believe. It's going to be in March, and I'm really excited for this fight. Um, Israel Adesanya has become one of my favorite fighters, uh, especially the over the past year and a half. I'm, I'm going to admit I haven't. I hadn't really watched too much of his fights um, before he fought Derek Brunson. Derek Brunson was when I really started to pay attention to him, and I watched how respectfully but convincingly he beat um, Anderson Silva, who is one of his biggest um, idols and uh, someone he just really looked up to, and he was able to convincingly beat him. And then also, everyone remembers that five-round war that he went through with Kelvin Gastelum. Um, that was one of the greatest fights in my opinion and speaking of greatest fights I'll have a podcast coming out soon of my personal picks for greatest fights in UFC history and that's definitely going to be on one of them Um, and I I don't know if they announced it yet but definitely was fight of the year last year in my opinion I don't think any other fight comes close to it but let's get back to the main topic Israel Adesanya is going to have his first title defense um, of the middleweight championship against or the middleweight championship belt against Yoel Romero. And it's interesting to me because I didn't think Yoel Romero deserved a title shot. He's lost like four of his last five fights. Um, He's never been knocked out in the UFC, I believe. It's it's always decision losses. He's a very tough guy. He's a very scary looking guy. He's got a lot of power. He seems like he just doesn't age and he has some good wrestling too. I think one of the best wrestlers in the middleweight division. Because uh, there's a lot of quote-unquote wrestlers in the middleweight division, but that don't wrestle. Like, Kelvin Gastelum, I haven't seen him use his wrestling in the past few fights, and he's a wrestler. He's just been standing up and boxing people, turning into a mini Mike Tyson. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens for Adesanya after he fights Romero, because um, recently Jared Cannonier and Robert Whitaker's fight has been kind of up in flames because Robert Whitaker... He pulled out because of a, he hasn't actually, he's laid a few rumors to rest, um, but he hasn't really said why he's pulling out. A lot of people speculate it's because of injury. There's a rumor that he laid to rest that said that he pulled out because he was donating bone marrow to his daughter who has a blood disorder or something. But whatever the case is, I hope he comes back stronger than ever because he's only 29 and he's one of the greatest strikers, I think, in definitely of this UFC era and one of the greatest of all time. Um, that being said, Israel Adesanya destroyed him striking wise, so that really, really puts into perspective how dominant Israel Adesanya is, especially on the feet. We haven't seen him on the ground much, um, but when we did see him on the ground, he was throwing up triangle chokes and just really showing that um, he's not just a pushover on the ground. He can yeah, he's developing his wrestling. He said that he knew zero jujitsu, zero wrestling, none of that stuff when he came into the UFC. And he's, it's impressive because he's been able to survive this long. He knows that wrestling is not his forte. And he has, I believe, the best takedown defense in the UFC right below John Jones, which is funny because um, people think that they're going to fight. But uh, Israel Adesanya has an interesting test in Yoel Romero. Joel Romero just came off, which in my opinion, I think he beat Paulo Costa, but the judge didn't see that way, and the judges are professionals, and I'm not, I'm just a fan, but most people think that Joel Romero won that fight, and they also believe he won the second fight against Robert Whitaker, which I'm the other way around, I think Robert Whitaker won, because consistency over five rounds is more important than two knockdowns, two knockdowns is not going to take the cake, and Robert Whitaker was just more consistent with his with the amount of strikes he landed in that fight. But Joel Romero has always been a consistently tough fighter and a tough challenger. Um, He has some serious knockout power. He went on a long knockout streak for the longest. I think that streak was halted by Robert Whitaker. But he came really close 
twice to knocking Robert Whitaker out. So I just don't see him being able to touch Israel Adesanya. Israel Adesanya is too fast, too crafty, too quick. His timing is impeccable with his shots, and I honestly think he will be the first person to finish Joel Romero by way of knockout. I'm not sure if he's been submitted. Pretty sure all of his losses in the UFC have been by decision, but I think Israel Adesanya will be the first person to finish Joel Romero. And I'm, I'm just a little worried for Izzy because not many people can take a Yoel Romero shot, but uh, we saw what Robert Whitaker did to Yoel Romero, and we saw what Israel Adesanya did to um, Robert Whitaker. So I know MMA math doesn't always add up, but we're going to have to see how Israel Adesanya approaches this fight. Um, on the flip side, I do see Yoel Romero testing Israel Adesanya's wrestling. Um, he He is an Olympic a silver medalist I believe and he he's just a big guy he's much bigger and physically more physically imposing than Israel Adesanya and he knows that Izzy is not a wrestler so I think I'm we're not going to see him just hold on to the leg but I do think he will have a fair mix-up of takedowns and striking but in the end I don't see O.L. Romero being able to land many flush shots on Israel Adesanya it's been very hard to hit him. Um, he hasn't been knocked down in the UFC. I know a lot of people say that Kelvin Gastelum knocked him down in the first round of their fight last year, but it wasn't recorded as a knockdown. Um, Izzy's even said that he slipped, and I mean, he he caught himself. So, yeah, he caught him with a flush shot, but he's not going to win. Um, he's not going to land any flush shots on Izzy. He's 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 getting old. Um, He's got good timing and power, but I just think at 42, you really got to wonder if he's going to be able to be faster and outmaneuver and outsmart a kickboxing champion who has over 100 kickboxing bouts. So my prediction is Israel Adesanya is going to win via fourth round knockout. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Zen Dependently Minded. Please stay tuned because the podcasts are only going to get bigger and better from here. Don't forget, the world is in our hands. Let's do something with it.